Hi, this is Regeline Sabat, also known as Gigi. You're listening to Walk With Me Podcast. My guest today is Jessica Maloney. Jessica is a psychotherapist, coach, author, and a Les Brown trained speaker. Welcome to the show, Jessica. Thank you so much, Gigi. I'm so excited to be here. Likewise. Now, why don't you start off by telling us more about you and where you are from? So my name is Jessica Maloney. I am from Long Island, New York. Um, I've been a licensed mental health counselor here for the last 10, 11 years or so. Um, and I have really found a passion for being able to help others, be able to guide others to get to know themselves, to be able to look at the things that they're experiencing in their life, the things that are going on around them and their families and within themselves and being able to make sense of it, maybe for the first time in their whole life. And my goal over the last couple of years has been able to step outside of my office and be able to help people in a very different way. You know, the world is constantly evolving and changing as we should do. But I think too often, a lot of us get stuck in our circumstances or in the way things have always been and not recognizing that just because they've always been this way doesn't mean that they always have to be this way. And this idea of creating a forward moving process for ourselves, for somebody else is, is such a passion of mine because I think that we should always be living our life in forward motion. And this idea of, that you have of the walk with me, I love that because Sometimes we just need somebody to walk beside us, whether we're speaking or not. And I love that. So I'm so excited to be walking along with you. <laughs> I love it. Likewise, now, what inspired you to become a mental health advocate? Honestly, growing up in like my high school days, I struggled a lot. It was it was not a pleasant time for me. You know, like I feel like back then everyone was like, oh, this is supposed to be the best time of your life. And I was like, well, this is the best time of my life. Like I'm in for it because this is not fun for me. You know, like I had my own struggles with depression and anxiety. And I actually had a great guidance counselor when I was in high school who was very supportive and very helpful. And, you know, I had a lot of my own struggles that I want to be able to take away from somebody else. I know realistically I cannot take away these things, but I understand that even in the best times of our life, we can have struggle. Even in the greatest, when there's all these great things happening around us, we can only see the negative. And I understand that there are a lot of people out there, whether they have a diagnosable mental health disorder or not, that we all have these feelings that creep in. We all have these thought processes, these patterns, these cycles. And I've learned how we can change them. I learned how we can create brand new thought patterns and processes in our own brains, in our own minds, in our own hearts. And I want to be able to help others because sometimes when we're stuck in those moments, we don't see a way out. And there are other people who might not be able to help us and potentially want to keep us where we are. So if there is somebody out there who feels like they can't fight for themselves, I want to be able to do that for them as well. I love it. Now, tell us more about your breakthrough journal. So I think that journaling is one of the greatest things that we could be doing for ourselves. It's, it's a forced time to reflect on yourself. It's a it's significant moment where you're not just sitting with your thoughts and thinking about them or trying to think differently. You have a pen and a paper in front of you and you're asked a question. So my journal is a guided journal. So there's a lot of activities in there that help promote self-awareness, help promote self-reflection, help this idea of getting to know who are you? Who am I? That like never ending question. Because again, if we're always evolving and changing, if the circumstances around us are always evolving and changing, that we're adapting to that. And maybe the person that you were yesterday is not quite the same person you are today. I mean, I know the person I was like five years ago, 10 years ago is definitely not the person I am now. So to be able to sit down and ask yourself the questions of who am I? Why, why am I doing the things that I do and actually answer those questions for yourself is one of the most powerful things that anybody can ever do. Because I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but like there was a long period in my life where I would consistently ask myself, why does this keep happening to me? And I would blame all the people and the things on the outside of me. These, well, my boss is, you know, you know, this guy or oh, there's a bad day. 
or my car broke down or whatever the situation is. They're all of these things. And listen, those things are real. And we could sit and we can commiserate on all the bad things and the bad people that have come through our life. But what part do I have control over? What part can I maybe change about the things that I'm thinking or the behaviors that I have or the feelings that have created or contributed to this outcome? So there's a lot of activities in there that just help you kind of get to know yourself and in turn creates a level of courage, a level of self-trust, a level of confidence that we need in order to be able to step outside of our circumstances and into the goals that really we want to have for ourselves. And there's some goal pages in there that help kind of quantify those and put those into writing because if you write things down, you're actually 30% more likely to achieve them. So I'm a big fan of like pen and paper. I mean, I also have about 100,000 things in my phone because that's just convenient. But I think that it's just a great tool to use to be able to put all of the information that we receive into ourself. I love reading. I love like some of these great, like amazing books out there. They're so like rewarding and fulfilling. But if I'm not applying them to my life, all of that good stuff eventually kind of fades for me. So that was the goal with the journal to try to help people to be able to look inward and apply the things that they might already know to their own life. Very powerful, an excellent title for that journal, Breakthrough Journal. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure to grab your copy of the journal. And now, Jessica, please tell us the major challenge that you had to overcome in your life. So the biggest thing for me was being able to do exactly what I'm trying to help other people with, get to know myself. Because for most of my life, I spent it depending on other people to define who I was, dependent on other people for my happiness. And it led me into a variety of toxic relationships in my life. One in particular where I just realized I couldn't fight anymore. I found myself in an argument one night that I had had with this person countless times before. And I just, I couldn't keep fighting because I just didn't have anything left. And I realized in that moment that if anybody was going to save me, that I was going to have to save me. Because I spent my whole life thinking that I just needed a relationship to be worthy. That now I have this relationship and it, I was being manipulated, gaslit, isolated. This is not what it was supposed to be that I couldn't keep depending on this person or anybody else to make me feel worthy, to make me happy. That I started recognizing the patterns and I realized that I had surrendered to allow how he made me feel, to dictate my thoughts, my choices and the people around me. But like I said, that I needed to start saving me because I couldn't depend on somebody else to, to do that because it wasn't working. I wasn't happy. Something wasn't right. This is not how it was supposed to be. This, this was everything I ever wanted. But now I felt like I had nothing. So I launched off into a journey to find me. And I started to think about if I could love me. Because you hear this idea of self-love, at least I used to hear it and roll my eyes, freaking self-love, all this nonsense. But what if, it, what if it is real? What if the idea of you getting to know yourself and you learning to love yourself is, is going to be the key to your happiness, to your worthiness, to be able to welcome love into your life? You know, this relationship for me was, was a highlight to the way that I had lived my life for the first several years, most of my life, actually. And to realize that I had experienced this level of abuse, it was life-changing. That if I didn't start seeing myself, if I didn't start looking at myself in the mirror, asking myself, why does this keep happening to you? What are you doing? What are you allowing? If I didn't answer those questions for myself, I would have continued in that cycle, whether it was with that person or somebody else. So it's not that I want to sit here and blame myself for all the things that I allowed to happen. 
But once I took accountability for me, that's when I started changing. And listen, it's not an easy thing, but sometimes these very significant moments in our life are the things that help us recognize what we're capable of when we really have to be strong. You can be. And then we just try to build on that. At least for me. Oh, very, very, <laughs> very inspiring. Now, what is your best advice to the audience for walking with purpose and living a life of happiness? Ooh. Walking with purpose and living a life of happiness. So growing up, my, my grandfather, he used to always tell me, you have to choose to be happy. And I just thought he was some like, you know, old man, his life is easy. But realistically, he was in World War II. Both of his brothers died over there. He lived through the Great Depression. I mean, he's worked his butt off his whole life. And he lived till 99. But every day that I saw him, he had a smile on his face and would tell us, me, my sister, and my cousins, that we had to choose to be happy. And honestly, this advice didn't resonate with me until I was at his funeral, sitting there, reflecting on the relationship that I had with him and the life that he led. And that if he could choose to be happy in some of these dark times, in his life specifically or in life in general, then maybe it could be a choice. Maybe the things that I choose to engage in, maybe the people that I choose to be around or stay around, maybe the choices that we make can snowball. Maybe the choices that we make every day are the footsteps that are going to lead us to our destiny. That if you wake up every day and think on purpose, what do I want to do today? Who do I want to be? I think that those choices alone can lead you to purpose, can lead you to fulfillment and allow you to walk in your life with your head held high, believing that even if you don't achieve the things that you want today, that the steps that you're taking are getting you closer in, in every moment that you choose you, you choose to think and act and walk on purpose that will take you to purpose. So I guess intentional thoughts, conscious choices, and the ability to self-reflect would be my, I guess, top three tips of advice to walk with purpose. I love it. Wake up every day and think on purpose. Very powerful. Now, Jessica, where can the audience find you? Um, I would love to connect with everybody. Um, my website is jessicamaloney.net. You can also find me on all social media outlets at the Jess Maloney. Um, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Clubhouse. So wherever it is, I have been so fortunate to be able to connect with so many fantastic people over the last several months. And I am so grateful for all the people that have come into my life, people who have helped me and supported me, people who I've been able to help and support. And it's just such a wonderful cycle that, Again, like, you know, you come out here with a purpose knowing that you want to do this and help people or live differently. And it's amazing how that can kind of just come right back into your life when you put that vibe out there. It's something that, you know, consistently happens to me. That's something I just really started doing. So, yes, please connect. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure to check out Jessica at jessicamaloney.net. And Jessica, thank you again for being a guest on Walk With Me podcast. You have a great day. Oh, Gigi, thank you so much. Take care. Likewise.